Today, I'll delve into the realm of true biblical angels in Christianity. Much like in Judaism, various writings of Christian theology have also established their hierarchies of angelic beings. We'll explore their significance, roles, and associations with various symbols and imagery. Let's start by examining the lowest order of angels, namely the archangels, and unravel their hierarchy within the celestial realm. I'll walk you through the importance of archangels in Christian tradition, their role in conveying divine messages, and their depiction in contemporary religious beliefs. We'll peek into the sacred texts to unveil more mysteries about these lofty spiritual beings. In the upcoming videos, we'll delve deeper into the exploration of each archangel individually, discussing their names, characteristics, and religious associations. Join us as we uncover more about these extraordinary spiritual intermediaries. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comments with your understanding of angels in Christianity. There are many of them, but the most influential Christian angelic hierarchy was put forth around the 6th century AD by Pseudo-Dionysius the Areopagite in his work De Coelesti Hierarchia. Christianity in general closely examines the personalities of angels, specific angels with names and tasks. As I mentioned earlier, the most influential Catholic angelic hierarchy was precisely the one proposed by Pseudo-Dionysius the Areopagite. He described nine levels of spiritual beings, which he grouped into three categories, or orders, or choirs, or spheres. Let's break it down, and I'll try to provide context from various denominations of Christianity, although I'm not sure if I can do this with all angels. Let's dive in. The Lowest Rank Angels The first and lowest sphere, or order, contains three types of heavenly beings. Angels, archangels, and principalities, also known as princes or archai. The angelic order is the final culmination of all celestial ranks. They are the last among heavenly beings who possess angelic properties. Next in line are us, ordinary humans. Although ahead of us there might be prophets, apostles, popes, and so forth, but angels are the closest beings to humans. Seven angels with golden bowls filled with God's wrath appear in the book of Revelation. It says, one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the sanctuary was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power. And no one was able to enter the sanctuary until the seven angels were finished with the seven plagues. Another angel, or rather the angel of the abyss, Abaddon, is also encountered in the same revelation. Quote, Sarana had over it a king, the angel of the abyss, and in Hebrew his name was Abaddon, and in Greek he was called Apollyon. Apollyon means destroyer. Further quote, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss, and shut it, and sealed it over him, so that he would not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. Revelation 9, 7, 11. And let's not forget about the seven angels with the trumpets from the same revelation. They are part of God's judgments of the last days. The judgments worsen and become more destructive as the end of earthly history approaches. I have to quote this. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. The first sounded, and there came hail and fire, mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Quote, the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. 
The name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth, and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. He opened the bottomless pit, and smoke went up out of the pit, like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and power was given them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment for five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. And in those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, and death flees from them. The appearance of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle, and on their heads appeared to be crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, of many horses rushing to battle. They have tails like scorpions and stings, and in their tails is their power to hurt men for five months. They have as king over them the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek he has the name Apollyon. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, one saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels, who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year, were released so that they would kill a third of mankind. The number of the armies of the horsemen was two hundred million. I heard the number of them. Quote, the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign for ever and ever. And the temple of God which is in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple, and there were flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. In short, some serious stuff is happening in the book of Revelation by John the Apostle. I highly recommend reading it. I've cut out a lot because the quote would have been twice as long. There are countless angels there, destroying humans, animals, plants, and so on, Angels in Revelation are instruments of God, a workforce that brings apocalypse upon humanity. But ultimately, about angels in Christianity, their tasks and appearance, I've already told you in other videos. They are not very different from angels in Judaism. They are messengers of God who evolve over time, as you understood from the book of Revelation. But let's delve deeper into archangels. The lowest rank archangels... An archangel is the second rank in the third lower sphere of the angelic hierarchy. Seven archangels are the chiefs of countless ordinary angels, the so-called heavenly host. The Eastern Orthodox Church mentions thousands of archangels, but only a few are honored by name. They maintain unity among the angels and govern them. Archangels receive divine illuminations through the first powers and transmit them to the angels, who then convey them to humans according to their capacity for divine illumination. Seven archangels, or four in some denominations, are associated with the branches of the menorah, the sacred seven-branched lampstand. Each branch of the menorah reflects one of the archangels. For example, in the book of Revelation, there is a verse that goes, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. However, in modern Eastern Christianity, not seven but eight archangels are honored. And in the upcoming videos, we will talk about each one separately.
Thank you for joining me on this journey into the world of archangels in Christianity. Today we've uncovered the significance of these celestial beings and their place within Christian theology. As we continue to explore the depths of spiritual symbolism and religious tradition, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll stay updated on all our latest videos exploring various aspects of faith, spirituality, and more. Don't miss out on future insights and discussions. Hit that subscribe button now, and let's continue this enlightening journey together. See you in the next video.